Today we're talking about the medication gabapentin. If you're currently taking it or have recently been prescribed it by your doctor, you need to be watching this video. We're going to go over how to take it, what are the most common side effects, as well as what are the most concerning things that you need to be aware of if you're going to be on it. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board-certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that's helpful, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. Today we're going to be talking about gabapentin, or sometimes known as Neurontin. This is a medication that's been around since the early 1990s and widely used as a generic medication since 2004. It was originally developed as a medication to treat seizures, but over time has been used for a lot of different conditions. There are only two actual approved uses of this medication in the United States, and that's to treat seizures as well as treating something called post-herpetic neuralgia. This is when you get chronic pain after having an outbreak of shingles. But this is a medication that is used for a lot of different conditions that are considered off-label or non-FDA approved conditions. Most commonly, we use this for different nerve-involved pains, these are things like diabetic neuropathy. This is when you get a burning pain that diabetics can get from uncontrolled diabetes. We also use it in different kinds of back pain or other pain that likely involves the nerves. But it's also used a lot in fibromyalgia, alcohol dependence, hiccups, chronic itching, restless leg syndrome, anxiety disorders, depression, and even treating symptoms of menopause. So as you can see, there are a lot of reasons that your doctor may have recommended this medication. It can help with a lot of these conditions, but just like any medication, it's going to help some and others not. The good news is that for most patients, they tend to tolerate the medication pretty well without any significant side effects. But remember, I said most. There certainly are patients who can have issues with this medication, and we'll go over that in a minute. Gabapentin comes in a tablet, capsule, or liquid form. Capsules come in 100, 300, and 400 milligrams, and tablets come in 600 and 800 milligrams. And then the liquid comes in a 250 milligram per five milliliters. That's usually given anywhere from one to three times a day with a maximum recommended dose of 3,600 milligrams a day. This is the kind of medication that usually has to build up in your system, so you usually won't notice any effect right away. Usually we have a patient start out at once a day and increase it slowly to avoid the side effects. Now we take the same approach as well when we need to stop it. This isn't a medication that you want to stop all of a sudden after being on it for a while. We have you slowly taper down off of it to avoid any of these kind of withdrawal symptoms. Now, this is certainly something you definitely want to be working with your doctor on and following their directions. Now, the main thing that most of you are going to be worried about with this medication is what are the side effects? Most people do well with it, but I certainly have patients who have had their problems with it as well. Probably the most common side effect that I have patients complain of when taking this medication is a foggy type feeling in the head. You can feel somewhat tired and drugged and just not yourself. Usually I recommend to my patients that they start it at night. In most people, those symptoms tend to go away over a few days, but not in everybody. Now, other common and less serious side effects can be some fatigue, some swelling in the ankles, a tremor, nausea, vomiting, dry mouth, and maybe some mood changes. Now, just like the foggy feeling, these tend to go away over time, but starting at a lower dose and slowly increasing it, we can usually avoid most of these problems. Now there are some concerning things though that you need to watch out for. These certainly are not common, but they are possible. Now the less common of the concerning side effects are certain allergic reactions and skin eruptions that can happen. You can also get a condition called rhabdomyolysis, where the muscles break down causing damage to the kidneys. It can also make it harder to breathe in some people, so those who have issues with their breathing need to be extra careful if they're going to be on it. Now we also recommend that you be careful if you're taking it with other prescription pain medications because they also have the ability to, de to decrease your drive to breathe. When you combine them together, it can be dangerous in some people. One of the more common or the more serious conditions is the effect that it can have with those with underlying depression. We can see worsening depression and even suicidal thoughts in some people. So it's very important that while taking it, you talk to loved ones and your doctor if you start to feel anything like that. You also need to be careful when coming off the medication. As I mentioned before, when coming off of it, it's important that you taper down slowly under the direction and help of your doctor. Stopping it abruptly has been shown in some people to cause withdrawal symptoms as well as even withdrawal seizures. 
One of the more concerning things though that we have seen with this medication over the past few years is that more and more people have been abusing it and have become addicted to it. In several states in the United States, it has become a controlled substance. We most often see it in those who are already abusing prescription pain medications. This is especially hard as gabapentin is something that many physicians try to use as an attempt to get people off pain medications. In a couple studies, it showed that approximately 1% of the general population in the United States and 22% of those in addiction treatment facilities had a history of abusing gabapentin. It is something you need to be careful with and work closely with your doctor and talk to them about any concerns you may have of addiction. If you already have a history of addiction, then it may not be the best option for you. Gabapentin can be a very helpful medication in many different situations, but unfortunately, the risk of addiction and abuse isn't on the radar of many who are prescribing it. Over the past few years, with all the problems that we have had with opioid addiction and abuse, as a profession, we have turned more and more to gabapentin to treat pain and other conditions. The unintended consequence has been to replace a very addictive substance for another, that although not as addictive, still is a medication that can have the same problem. Now, the biggest problem with discussing the serious side effects is scaring away from taking it. That isn't my intention either. This can be a powerful tool in treating some very difficult and life-altering conditions. The majority of people do great on this medication and it helps improve their quality of life in a dramatic way. Now, we're all different, so that's why it's important to be aware of the issues that can arise so that you can make an educated decision with your doctor. Now, this isn't an all-encompassing discussion of this medication either. There are certainly other things that your own doctor may want to discuss with you. But hopefully, now you can feel a little more informed about how this may affect you. Well, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you did, please take the time to give this video a like and share it with your friends. It helps our channel to grow and reach to the other people that may need this in their life. And if you haven't done so yet, don't leave without subscribing and hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Well, until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.